Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be continuing on with creating our interaction system. Um, this is going to be a lot of information that I've got to cover in a short amount of time, so um, if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to ask me, but besides that, let's get started. So first, I'm going to take our interactable variables, I'm going to drag it off and say set, okay, we'll plug this in, and I'm going to right click and split the struct pin. So all I'm going to do here is set this to negative one, because this is the... Um, the lowest value that you can have for a dot product, um, which will be explained shortly. Next, we'll drag off, and we're going to say uh, for each loop. And for our array, we want to take our interactables array and plug that in. So basically, for each element in the array, it will do something. Now, off of element, we want to get uh, the interactable mesh um, of the you know the BP base interactable. And then with that, we want to get the center of mass. And what this will return is basically, you know, the center of our object, um, which we are going to use for determining kind of the angle between our camera and the object itself. Okay, or rather, not the angle, but the dot product be between them. All right. So with that in mind, let's take our camera. We want to get it, and we'll drag off and say get uh, world location. And we want to subtract these two values. So we'll take our center of mass minus our world location of the camera, that is. All right. And now this will return probably a pretty large value. So we just want to make sure it's normalized. So we'll add a normalize. All right. Then from there, we want to do a dot product. Now the value we're going to multiply by is our forward vector of our camera. So we'll say get forward vector All right, and plug in the return value to the dot product All right, so this will get us a value between negative 1 and 1 basically 1 being we're looking exactly at our object or the center of mass I mean and then negative 1 being you know we're looking in the completely opposite direction so uh, with that in mind we're gonna drag off and we wanna check if this is this float value of the dot product is greater than a certain value now this value will be basically the uh, kind of, um, I don't know, however however, um, however much distance from left to right of the object that you want to be able to, you know, kind of select, um, or like have that item be interactable, I guess. It'll make more sense in a little bit. So what I've found to work pretty well is value of 0.8. So that means you can look in the general direction of the object, uh, but you don't have to look right at it. Um, next, we want to check also, if this value is greater than um, the current value of our dot. So we'll drag off, say get, split the struct pin, and plug in the dot from here. All right. Now, for the, both of these Boolean values, we want to make sure that both of them are true. So we'll do an and Boolean. And then off of this, we'll say a branch. And we'll hook up the center of mass execute node to the branch. Okay, so if this, you know, this check turns out to be true, then we want to set our interactable variables. So we'll split the struct pin again, and we'll set the dot value equal to this, this product, and we'll set the interactable, um, like the interactable itself, equal to this array element. So we can drag off um, all the way out here. Okay, just for kind of cleaning up the, the code a little bit, I'm going to double click the line to add a reroute node and just have it come above everything. So add a couple lines there. This is purely for keeping things clean. You don't have to do that. Uh, but basically that's all we have to do um, like in terms of getting our best interactable. Okay. So next, once we've completed this, we want to take whatever we got as our best interactable and set it as our best interactable. So on completed, we're going to drag out here and say is valid All right and we want to do the question mark one and what we're going to check is valid of is again let's get our interactable variables split the struct pin and we want to see if this interactable value is valid okay so we want to see if it's even been set over here okay now if it is then we're going to call our set best interactable event and we will set that interactable as our, you know, whatever our best 
are best interactable from over here. Okay. Now if it's not valid, we'll set the best interactable, but we'll set it to nothing. Okay, so we'll just leave it blank. All right, so now that we've now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go into our best interactable. And remember we have this input of our interactable. So with that, we are going to immediately drag off and say is valid. And again, choose the question mark because we want to make sure that this object is valid. All right? We also want to check um, if it's not equal to another variable. And that variable is going to be something which we set later on here. Um, but we can create it right now. So we'll create it. And this is going to be called highlighted uh, interactable. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is, you know, once we get our best interactable and then set our best interactable, that best interactable will be highlighted uh, by a material that I've already created um, that uh, I'll, you know, give to you guys for free. So um, anyways, so we've created this variable. Let's go ahead and drag it out and hook it up. Perfect. So now off of the return value of the Boolean, we are going to say branch. And we want to hook up the is valid to our branch. All right now from true, we want to um, get our highlighted interactable, but we want to do a validated get. So we'll right click and go to uh, convert to validated get. So hook that up. All right now off of is valid, we're going to do something. But off of is not valid, um, yeah, and we'll get to this in a second. But off of is not valid, we're going to drag out and we're going to say set uh, highlighted interactable, and the, and what we're going to set it as is this interactable, All right? So this is you know coming in assuming that a um, it's you know this value or this variable or not variable sorry this interactable is valid, then if it is valid. We want to make sure that it's not equal to our currently highlighted interactable. And then if that's true, then we want to make sure that the highlighted interactable is valid again. Um, or rather that um, or rather that it's not highlighted, I guess. Um, so yeah, once we've done that, now we will set the highlighted interactable and then we'll do one last thing out here. So let's go ahead and do that last thing. Um, Let's go ahead and open up our base interactable, and we're going to create a new function. This will be called set highlight. So we're going to use this function to um, kind of add that highlight effect. So what we need to do is take our interactable mesh, get it, and we're going to drag off and say set um, render custom depth. Okay. Now for this value, we're actually going to add a um, an input value on the function itself. So that we can control it from our character, and we're just going to say highlight question mark. So whether or not we should highlight it, basically. Okay, so we've done that. Let's plug it in, and we're good to go now. So we can go back to our character, and now um, since this is a variable of type base interactable, we can get that set highlight uh, function from it. So we'll drag off of here and say set highlight. All right. So set highlight of that function. And we'll set it to true so that we, you know, we will highlight it, we will, you know, render the custom depth, and you know, we can apply our material. So now off of is valid, okay, we are also going to set the highlight. But this time, rather than setting it to uh, true, we'll leave it at false. Okay, so now we've got a couple, you know, false and not valid nodes we still gotta take care of. Um, so first let's plug this into our set highlighted interactable. Um, second, we will plug in our false to it as well. And lastly, um, we're going to take this get, and I'm going to control W down here to duplicate it. And we'll do the same thing off of is valid. Um, also, also setting the highlight to false. And then instead of setting our highlighted interactable to something, uh, we will set, nope, not highlight, that's my bad, uh, set highlighted interactable to nothing okay so basically if if the value from our get best interactable is n is not valid right then um, we'll make sure that it's not being highlighted anymore okay so there we go we've got all the setup um, I'm just gonna clean this up really quick plug in some 
just to clean it up. Okay. So we're setting the highlight and everything, and uh, now all we need to do is go back to our event graph and make sure that we plug in, you know, our update best interaction. So drag that in, connect it to event tick. All right, and now it'll update our best interaction every frame. Okay, so that's a little fast. We'll probably change it in a little bit, but anyways, um, let's go out to the editor. Okay, and we're going to make sure that we have a post-processing volume in here. You should by default, uh, but if you don't, go over to, um, uh, what is it, basic, I believe. Nope. It's somewhere, I swear. Visual effects. Add a post-processing volume, um, and you can change it to uh, unbound if you want, just so you don't have to resize it to the size of your level. So I'm going to say unbound, and now go down to blendables, add something to the array, and we're going to choose an asset reference. Now the asset we're going to use is this material that I've created um, <laughs> called in M Interact Highlight. And if you want to see that really quick, actually, I'll open it up just so you can check it out. Um, it might look more complicated than it actually is, so don't worry. Uh, you know, really, just you can follow this, take some screenshots if you want, but again, I'll be giving it to you guys. Um, please note, all these are custom depth, right? You can click this little, um, not this, you can go over here in the scene texture to change it, so make sure you set it to custom depth. Okay, so do all this stuff. And then lastly up here, this scene texture, make sure it is post-process input um, zero. So again, um, you change that over in the details panel, okay? And then um, this right here is a vector parameter four. So if you type vector four, okay? And then you right click, convert the parameter just like that. All right, that's how I did that. Okay, and um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. And then the last thing, after you've plugged it into a miss of color, make sure you change the m material domain to post process. Okay, make sure it's yeah, make sure it's post process. Okay, so now um, everything should be good to go. All we have to do now is add one of our base interactables. So we'll go to the folder, take our base interactable, drag it in, and. Um, We'll select the interactable mesh, and I'm going to change this to a cube really quick, just so we can actually see something. And last thing I'm going to do is open this up, make sure our interactable area is um, not hidden in game, just so you guys can see it. You don't have to do that, um, but I just want to make sure you guys can visualize it. So let's go ahead and press play, and you know, moment of truth here. Um, see how you can see? Here's our interactable area, and when I interact with it, our um, you know, our cube should kind of light up in a highlighted effect. So walk in, and there we go. Okay, so it's highlighted. Now we can, now we know that it's, you know, it's, um, we've registered it. So basically in the future, we'll be able to, you know, now click a button and add it to our inventory or blow it up or, you know, do, do all sorts of crazy stuff. So, um, and then of course, when I leave, it stops highlighting, all right? And then just to kind of show the dot, product thing working. I'll duplicate this really quick. Okay, so this one's highlighting. So even though I'm overlapping two, it's only going to highlight the one that's, um, you know, has the better dot product. So that's kind of nice too. Okay, so anyways, that's everything guys. Thanks for watching. And um, again, I'll make that material available to you guys on our website. And uh, with that, yeah, thank you. And we'll see you in the next one.